In this animation, you are seeing the red color part is cerebellum and white color part is cerebrum. Location of the cerebellum. It is occupying posterior inferior portion of the cranial cavity just below the occipital lobe of the cerebrum. This is the lateral view of the cranial cavity. Cerebellum is located on posterior inferior side just below the occipital lobe of the cerebrum and behind the parts of the brain stem. This is the lateral view and you are seeing cut portion of the cerebellum. This is folia and the gap in between the folia is called fissures. Folia is a gyrus on the surface of the cerebellum. Consist of three layers of cells, the top molecular layer, the Purkinje layer and bottom granular layer. And this cortex covers deep white matter. Longitudinal divisions of the cerebellum. This central portion is called vermis and peripheral part is called hemisphere. Hemisphere have intermediate zone and lateral zone. Intermediate zone known as paravermal area. This is the schematic diagram representing the parts of vermis and hemisphere. Unrolled cerebellum. These are the parts of vermis. Lingula, central lobule, culmen, declive, folium, tuber, pyramis, uvula and nodule. Here there is a mnemonic to remember the parts of the vermis. L C C D F T P U N L for lingula C for central lobule C for culmen D for declive F for folium T for tuber P for pyramis, U for uvula, N for nodule. This area is called parafloculus, which is a part of hemisphere. Anatomical divisions of the cerebellum. Anatomically, cerebellum is divided into three lobes: anterior lobe, posterior lobe, and floculonodular lobe. These lobes are separated by three fissures: primary fissure which separates anterior lobe from the posterior lobe. The part of the cerebellum lies in between primary fissure and posterior lateral fissure is called posterior lobe. The part of the cerebellum which lies just below the posterior lateral fissure is called floculonodular lobe. Here parts of vermis also divided into anterior lobe, posterior lobe and floculonodular lobe. Lingula central lobule and culmen are considered in anterior lobe. Declive, folium, tuber, pyramis and uvula are considered in the posterior lobe. Nodule which is considered in the floculonodular lobe. Histological structure of the cerebellum. Cerebellar cortex which is the outer gray matter. Just inside the cerebellar cortex there is a white matter which contains afferent and efferent nerve fibers which forms medullary core and deep cerebellar nuclei which are the masses of gray matter embedded in the medullary core. There are three layers of the cerebellar cortex. Molecular layer which is the most outer portion of the cerebellar cortex which is formed by stellate cell and basket cell. Second layer is Purkinje cell layer as there are presence of Purkinje cells. Innermost layer is called granule cell layer which is formed by granule cell and Golgi cell. These cells make intrinsic cerebellar circuitry where afferents coming from olivocerebellar tract through climbing fibers and vestibulocerebellar tract, spinocerebellar tract, corticopontocerebellar tract, reticulocerebellar tract, cuneocerebellar tract through mozi fibers. Here, efferents coming out from deep cerebellar nuclei. Deep cerebellar nuclei, these are the masses of gray matter embedded in the medullary core. The fastigial nucleus, 
present in the central part of vermis the interpositus nucleus which is collection of nuclei globosus and nuclei emboliformis which is present in the paravermal area the dented nucleus which is present in the hemispheric part of the cerebellum phylogenetic divisions or evolutionary stages of the cerebellum archicerebellum paleocerebellum and neocerebellum archicerebellum it is the oldest part of the cerebellum which consists of lingula and floculonodular lobe paleocerebellum it is the next part to appear phylogenetically which consists of entire anterior lobe except lingula pyramis uvula and parafloculus of the posterior lobe neocerebellum it is the latest part to develop and it consists of whole of the posterior lobe except pyramis uvula and parafloculus functional divisions of the cerebellum vestibulo cerebellum spino cerebellum and cortico cerebellum vestibulo cerebellum which is mainly formed by floculonodular lobe effector nucleus nucleus fastigial function control of body posture and equilibrium second functional division is spino cerebellum it includes entire anterior lobe except lingula and pyramis uvula parafloculus of the posterior lobe effector nucleus nucleus interpositus which is collection of nucleus globosus and nucleus emboliformis function control of axial and limb muscles third functional division is cortico cerebellum it includes whole of the posterior lobe except pyramis uvula and parafloculus effector nuclei nucleus dentatus function smooth performance of highly skilled voluntary movements connections of the cerebellum cerebellum have a front and efferent connections there are three cerebellar peduncles superior cerebellar peduncle middle cerebellar peduncle and inferior cerebellar peduncle superior cerebellar peduncle which connects cerebellum to the back of mid brain afferents of the superior cerebellar peduncle are ventral spino cerebellar tract and tecto cerebellar tract efferents of superior cerebellar peduncle are dentato rubral fibers dentothalamic fibers and cerebellar fibers to the mid brain middle cerebellar peduncle which connects cerebellum to the dorsum of pons afferents of middle cerebellar peduncle is cerebro pontine cerebellar fibers and this middle cerebellar peduncle doesn't have any efferent connection inferior cerebellar peduncle which connects cerebellum to the dorsolateral aspect of medulla afferents of the inferior cerebellar peduncle are dorso spino cerebellar tract external arcuate fibers reticulo cerebellar tract olivo cerebellar tract and vestibulo cerebellar tract here there is a one mnemonic to remember or the afferents which passes through the inferior cerebellar peduncle is d e r o v efferents of inferior cerebellar peduncle cerebellar reticular pathway cerebellar olivary pathway and cerebellar vestibular pathway the mnemonic to remember these efferents which are passing through inferior cerebellar peduncle is r o v functional division of the cerebellum includes vestibulo cerebellum spino cerebellum and cortico cerebellum first of all we are going to see the control of body posture and equilibrium it's a function of vestibulo cerebellum afferents of the vestibulo cerebellum vestibulo cerebellar tract it conveys static equilibrium from macula of saccule and utricle via vestibular nuclei and kinetic equilibrium from ampullary crest of semicircular ducts spino cerebellar and cuneo cerebellar tract this tract carry information related to muscle tone and position of limb in the space reticulo cerebellar tract brings feedback about activities of extra pyramidal system efferents from floculonodular lobe and vestigial nuclei go to spinal cord through vestibular and reticular nuclei 
via vestibulospinal and reticulospinal tract. Efferents via vestibular nuclei and reticular nuclei influence spinal motor neurons to keep body posture upright and via medial longitudinal fasciculus which connects motor nuclei of extraocular muscles and regulate the position of eyes in relation to movements of head. Control of muscle tone and stretch reflexes It's a function of spinocerebellum. Afferents from spinocerebellar, cuneocerebellar and oligocerebellar tract carry a feedback from proprioceptive and tactile receptors. It gives information about muscle tone and position of limbs and body. Spinocerebellum receives auditory and visual information via tectocerebellar tract. It also receives cortical inputs via pontine nuclei. Efferents coming out of the spinocerebellum from nuclei fastigiae, nuclei emboli and nuclei globosus via fastigiobulbar, cerebelloreticular and cerebello-olivary tracts. Via reticulospinal and olivospinal tracts, it reaches to alpha and gamma motor neurons of the spinal cord. Through this pathway, it modifies muscle tone and regulates postural reflexes. Through cerebello-vestibulospinal and cerebello-reticulospinal, it facilitates gamma motor neurons in the spinal cord. These gamma motor neurons reflexly modify the activity of alpha motor neuron and regulate the muscle tone. Spinocerebellum is the site of alpha and gamma motor neurons linkage. Control of voluntary movements. Corticocerebellum takes part in smooth performance of highly skilled voluntary movements. This is done with the help of two feedback loops. Open feedback loop, also called cerebro cerebello cerebral connection, which includes cerebro-pontocerebellar tract, which is formed by corticopontine fibers, which ends in ipsilateral pontine nuclei. Cerebellar fibers from the pontine nuclei pass through middle cerebral peduncle of the opposite side and terminate in lateral zone of the cerebral hemisphere. Thus, whole pathway is called cerebellopontocerebellar tract. Efferent go to cerebrum via dentorubrothalamic cortical tract, which consists of dentorubral fibers, which starts from the dented nucleus and pass via superior cerebellar peduncle to end in red nucleus on the opposite side. Rubrothalamic fibers from red nucleus to thalamus and thalamocortical fibers from thalamus to area number 4 and 6 of the motor cortex. The cerebro cerebello cerebral circuit modulates motor commands of pyramidal tract with a programming of movement. Closed feedback loop, it is formed by fibers from the cerebral motor cortex to the paravermal cerebellum and again back to the cerebral motor cortex. A front limb is formed by collaterals of corticospinal tract. It makes synapse with ipsilateral pontine nuclei, inferior olivary nuclei and contralateral reticular nuclei. Here pontocerebellar fibers from pontine nuclei and olivocerebellar fibers from inferior olivary nucleus reach the contralateral cerebral cortex and reticulocerebellar fibers from lateral reticular nucleus are projected to ipsilateral cortex. All these fibers connected to the paravermal area of cerebellar hemisphere and it also connected to the deep cerebellar nuclei, nucleus interpositus and nucleus dentatus. Efferent from dented nucleus pass through superior cerebellar peduncle, cross the midline and divide into two groups. First is dentothalamic fibers which reaches the motor cortex via thalamocortical fibers and another one is the dentorubral fibers which make synapse in the red nucleus of the opposite side. Rubrothalamic tract terminate in thalamus and reaches cerebral cortex via thalamocortical fibers. Rubroreticular tract terminate into reticular formation which projects into spinal cord via reticulospinal tract. Rubrospinal tract which directly projects from red nucleus to the spinal cord. Comparator action when motor cortex sends impulses to corticospinal tract, it also sends message to paravermal area of the cerebellum about the sequential intended plan of movement for the next fraction of a second. Here cerebellum also gets feedback from the proprioceptors of muscle, tendons and joints about what actual movement is occurring. The paravermal area of the cerebellum compares the intended movement with the actual movement and sends corrective signals to the motor cortex through thalamus and red nucleus. This event is completed within 10 to 20 milliseconds. This is done by the closed loop circuit. Damping action 
With its comparator function, cerebellum provides smooth coordination of agonist and antagonist muscle for the performance of acute purposeful movements. However, all the movements are pendular and have a tendency to overshoot. Corticocerebellum sends impulses to the cerebral cortex to discharge appropriate signals to the muscle so that extra exaggeration of muscle movements does not occur and prevents overshooting. So the movements will be smooth and coordinated. Planning of sequence of movements. Lateral parts of cerebral hemisphere communicate with premotor and sensory portion of the cerebral cortex. This is two-way communication between these two areas. Plan is transmitted from cerebral cortex to cerebellum and there is a two-way traffic between two areas which provides appropriate transmission from one movement to the next. This plan is stored as a memory in the cerebral cortex. Once the learning process is over, these activities are executed easily and smoothly in a sequence. Timing function. Lateral part of cerebellar hemisphere provides appropriate timing for each movement. Predictive events. Cerebellum have role in predictive events with the help of auditory and visual phenomena. Let's say, person can predict how rapidly he can approach the object. Control of ballistic movements. Rapid alternative movements which takes place in different parts of the body. For example, rapid supination and pronation of hands or just like dancing movements. Cerebellum coordinates the action of agonist and antagonist muscle of the body. Servo mechanism. Cerebellum plays an important role in learning of motor skills. Once the skill is learned, sequential movements could be executed without interruption. But when there is any disturbance in the movement, corticocerebellum immediately influences the cerebral cortex and correct the movement. This action of corticocerebellum is known as servomechanism.